I'm going to try my hand at a black cat tarp and the original black cat tarp design was a design by Black Bishop and I will include a link to his original instructions so that you can check those out. But since I have my own way of sewing and doing things, I reinterpreted this into a pattern that's easiest for me to use. So I will put this online and I'll give you a link to where you can download the pattern if this makes sense to you. The black cat tarp is a hexagon and this initial curve here is based on a 60 degree angle off the ridge line and so that sets the dimensions of the tarp and then all of the sides here are going to be cut with a 1 to 12 ratio catenary curve. And the tarp that I'm going to be making is an 11 foot tarp and the width of my fabric is 59 inches so I'm going to be using this set of dimensions but on my summary instructions I've included some dimensions for larger tarps so if you're using up to 66 inches of fabric in width or if you're making a 12 foot tarp. Also included in this PDF I'm linking for you is a 1 12 inch true catenary curve and this is one that my sister Sally did for us and I have put it on a PDF sheet and in the bottom or on every page I'm going to have a one square inch so that you can verify that it is one inch. But this is the catenary curve and this one's 84 inches long which is long enough to do a 12 foot tarp that's 66 inches wide. So 84 inches long may be the longest catenary curve length that you'd need for this tarp. I'm not sure but for every 12 inches of length of the curve it goes in one inch so this is a 112 so thank you Sally for making this template for us so that we can easily cut out and make catenary curves without a lot of measurements or elaborate spreadsheets. I'm going to make my tarp out of this black 1.1 ounce silk poly fabric from Ripstop by the Roll and then my reinforcement triangles are going to be made out of this basic ripstop nylon. In his instructions, Black Bishop says that you'll need a yard of that and he recommends a 1.9 ounce per square yard nylon and he made his out of gray. Since I want to be just like Black Bishop on this experiment, I'm going to also make mine out of gray. I've got some Mara 70 thread that I'm going to be using in black for this project and I also have some one inch beastie D's and that'll go well with my polyester webbing here which I'm going to use. This is just some black one inch webbing so those will fit those beastie D's and these are stronger than a conventional nylon or plastic D ring so we're going to go with strength here. And for this project today I'm going to be using this Microtex needle in size 12 because it goes with my Mara 70 thread and a universal needle would also be fine. I've even sewn through tarp material sealed poly with a ballpoint needle and that was also fine. So there's a lot of different theories out there about which needle to use. Just maybe practice sewing a few stitches and see what needle works best for you. But before I get started on cutting fabric, I am going to assemble my catenary curve pieces. On the bottom corner of each one, I have put a little one inch square for reference. Just line that up with a ruler and make sure that it really is one inch square because you'll want to make sure that this is printed at the proper scale. I'm going to cut these pieces out. Each one's labeled, so there's piece one and all the way to nine pieces. And then just line it up on top of piece two so that it lines up. We've got these horizontal lines here that'll help and the numbers will help. Just use some scotch tape and tape these together. Now the last tarp that I made which was the winter tarp. I used x Trekker's parabola calculator and a parabola is actually a different shape. It's a 
different geometric shape than a catenary curve, although when we're talking about this scale, so we've got just a slight arc over the distance like we're using here, they're nearly the same. I mean the amount that they are different is probably less than the width of your scissors. But as catenary curves get deeper, the differences in the catenary versus the parabola become much more apparent. In Black Bishop's original design for his black cat tarp, he used a true catenary curve. So I asked my sister if she would help out with the calculations for this template. I have all of the pieces now taped together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut along the top line and then along this arc here so that I just have the catenary curve cut out. We'll just remove the rest of the paper. And I'll just cut the curve off the rest of the paper. Now that our catenary curve template is cut out, you could tape this to a piece of cardboard to keep it in good shape. So I'm just going to fold this in half and then roll it up and reserve this for later when we cut the fabric. But at least it's all prepared now. I'll put a paper clip in it. We're ready to cut the fabric out for our tarp now. And what I have here is a diagram of the layout on fabric if you want to conserve your fabric. So my fabric is 59 inches wide and I am making an 11 foot tarp. So this is the set of measurements I'm going to use. The amount of fabric I need for this project, the minimum amount is six and a half yards. And so how I would cut that is I've got my line A that is my hex cut setback. That's this amount here. That tells me how deep this angle needs to be. That's 34 and 1 16th inch. So I can transfer those numbers here. And then that's also this number here. Then I've got my ridge line length. That's this number here and this number here. 132. 132. And then that means that the base of my tarp here, which is this one here, that is 63 and 7 eighths. So if you had a piece of fabric, you could Square up the end. Make sure that this end is perpendicular with your selvage. Measure in 34 and 1 16ths, make a mark. Measure in 63 and 7 eighths, make a mark. And then measure down this way 132 inches and make a mark. Then from your starting point up here, measure down 132, make a mark. Measure 63 and 7 eighths and make a mark. And then all you have to do is connect these lines with a straight edge all the way across. So we'll cut out our fabric. I'm going to lay my fabric out outside so that I can get it nice and square and straight. I've got the fabric sort of laid out here on the patio outside and you can see at the end I've lined it up with a T-square and they cut it pretty darn well at the factory. So there's no need for me to try to square that up. Rip stopped by the roll did a great job cutting. So I've measured in the distance that I need, which is this distance right here, 34 and 1 16th. And I've put a little mark on the fabric 
with a magic marker which you can barely see my black mark on the black fabric. And then I've taken a piece of molding from the shed that's long enough and I've just stretched it across and that is where I'm going to make my first cut. I'm just going to follow right along. Then I've laid out my measuring tape here and I'm going to measure down the second length I need which is going to be the base. And if we look at the pattern here, that's 63 and 7 eighths inches. So I'm going to walk along my measuring tape until I get to 63 and 7 eighths. I'm going to make another mark right there. This is where my next cut's going to be on this line, 63 and 7 eighths. Then I'm going to measure from the bottom this length here, which is going to be 132 inches, and then I'll make a mark on the other side. I'm on the other side of the tarp here, and I've got my measuring tape laid out all the way along the edge, and it's not long enough to get me 132 inches. Mine only goes to 120. So I'm going to line up this measuring tape with my ruler, and then mark here the 12. Try not to mark the stone. Okay. And that'll be the line that we'll cut. I've taken my marker and right here I've marked right along the side of that piece of wood that I'm using as a straight edge. And I've marked that. That's where I'm going to cut. And then I've moved my dowel down to my other marks and I'll just mark that. We'll cut one tarp out at a time. Okay, so I've cut these out, just following along the line that I made. And down here, I've cut this piece out along the line that I made. So I'm gonna fold this one up and put it inside, and then we're gonna cut this other piece. I've got this all spread out again. We're gonna do the base now. And just to confirm with our measurements, that's 63 and 7 eighths inches. So I have my measuring tape here with the zero at the corner. And I'm going to walk out 63 and 7 eighths inches. I'll make my mark right there. showing up a little bit. And now on the other side of the tarp I'll do the ridge line of 132 inches. So I need my ridge line 132 inches so I've just laid my measuring tape out like I did on the other side and then where my measuring tape ends I've lined up my ruler, made my mark right there so that it's 132 inches. And now I'll just set my straight edge across so that the one side is here at this mark and then the other side is lined up at the other mark. All right, I've marked the line out then with my magic marker and I'm just going to cut this out of the fabric and then I'll have both of the sides of my tarp at least cut into the general shape. So both sides now of the tarp are cut out. The long end here is the ridge line and the short end is the base of the hex tarp. So I'm going to fold this piece up and bring it inside and we'll finish up the rest of the tarp indoors. I feel remarkably lucky that I didn't get any bird droppings on this tarp while I was out here today. I tried to work swiftly but if you look up where I'm working, this is what I've got. So, little surprises can often fall down. I've got the tarp laid out across the entirety of my sewing table. I've got my template laid out here. I want the center point of my curve here to line up with the center of my fabric. So I folded the fabric in half and marked it with a pin. And I want that pin to be right underneath and then the sides of the catenary curves. I want to be the same distance 
from the edge of my template. And I can use these little numbers here on the edges. I can make sure that both edges are lining up with this dot, 4 and 1 16th inch. So now I'm just going to pin my template right to the tarp with pins. And I'm pinning right through the paper. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm cutting this part away. So it doesn't matter if I put a lot of holes in it with pins because I'm cutting it off. And I have both pieces of the fabric here. I've got both pieces of the tarp pinned together. And then I'll just run a line of pins along here. That way everything will be held straight when I put this together and cut the catenary curve out. And I'll take my scissors and I'm just going to cut along the border of the paper. Just make sure when you're cutting this that you're not cutting into your paper template because you don't want to dull your scissors. Keep your scissors sharp. So this piece is now free, but I'm going to take my little clips. Got a little basket here of just various size little clips. I'm going to clip this edge together. That'll prevent this thing from sliding out of control as I rotate it because I have two more catenary curves to cut. 